Hi there, Church is here. Welcome back for another cigarette review. Today, Chesterfield King's non-filtered cigarette. Non-filter. Yeah. What a nice packet. How many new packets of cigarettes do we see that looks as nice as this one? You know, they're often metallic, you know, when, when I'm thinking of the, the packet of Cool, for example, doesn't look nearly as nice as this one. Man. <laughs> that looks awesome. Really, really awesome. This is vintage. This is old school. This is great. So, let's jump into this review. As you can see, here it's got a faint green. Here it's got the, a little sketch of the what looks like uh, an oriental uh, city. I, you know, more things with little t towers and things like that. Anyway, Chesterfield non filter Kings 20 Glass A cigarettes. These are made by Philip Morris, USA. Richmond, Virginia, um, you know the address, okay. Made in the authority of the trademark owner, of course. Uh, 3w.pmusa.com and then the number established 1912. It says here, please don't litter. Exact same symbol as on the Mar Marlboro packet here. Please don't litter. Little picture of an ashtray and a, a cigarette, a burning cigarette. FSC, yeah, unfortunately. These are FSC. Yeah, they have to. It's got a Tennessee tax bait stamp. Yeah. Um, as far as you know, the dating of packing and stuff like that, I haven't taken a look. Does it even have one? RD16. You know, I don't know when this package was made. You know, some people can uh, actually guess when it was made. But I really can't with what was given to me, yeah, maybe, under the light or something, no, or oh, one, I don't know, I don't know when the packet has been made, I don't believe in the, in the you know, you can actually know when it's been made just by looking at the, the serial number, at least not for this packet, so, anyway, uh, just for your 20 cigarettes, get that very nice looking, um, you know, it's not really a tax stamp, but the thing that closes the, the packet. As you see, I open it the the proper way, if you can consider this a proper way. So, really, really nice packet. I'm, you know, I could say that a hundred times. Just a feel with that. The C in the ornamentation. That looks really nice. Like medieval type writing. You know, gothic type stuff. Looks awesome. Uh, Surgeon general warning. It's not good for you. Okay. It may complicate my pregnancy. Oh, very sorry for the baby. So. First, I have to read a little stuff here. Because that's the specificity of my reviews. Is that I give a little historical uh, insight. Brand got introduced in 1873 by the Drummond Tobacco Company. In 1888, the company gets bought by Leggett and Myers. So originally, these were made by Leggett and Myers um, until you know it got acquired by um, by Philip Morris in uh, later years. So very recently, oh, so uh, no, 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 no. come. In 1888, the company gets bought by Liggett and Myers. In 1978, Philip Morris acquires the non-US international business of Liggett and Myers. In 1999, Philip Morris buys the brand from Liggett and Myers. So, since 1999, it's made by Philip Morris. Liggett and Myers always say that they introduced the cigarette brand in 1912. As stated on the packet, sources say that the cigarette got already introduced in. 1896 by the Drummond Tobacco Company, but Joe Giesenhagen, the author of the, the Collector's Guide to Vintage Cigarette Packs, writes that the cigarette itself got already introduced in 1873 and even shows a pack from 1887. During the 1930s, 40s and 50s, Chesterfield was the third best-selling brand in the USA. So, that's what we have here. Okay, now we have a 
85 millimeter long king size non filter cigarette. How good is that? I don't know when the the not uh, the king size version is being introduced, but back in the days it was the same price for the short ones and the king size. So obviously, I personally would have gone with the just uh, the, the king size. Actually, I'm gonna give the Tara nicotine ratings right here. Okay, this is from the 2007 FTC report. So, machine measured uh, stuff. Numbers. It says it has a crown here. I don't know if you can see anything. Maybe. Let's get a crown. Oh, 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 I might get into it. Anyway, it's written in black with a little crown. And it says Chesterfield. Mm, in, uh, you know, plain capital letters not not in that style of letters but anyway looks very nice <sighs> smells very nice smells like smells like heaven I really I really take the smell of those it's almost smelling like a Marlboro from the United States almost and I guess this is the closest thing to what a Marlboro unfit would be in my opinion so which end am I gonna choose now? This one. <laughs> oh, that's good. Massive body, obviously coming through enough. Uh, no filter on that cigarette. It's it's really, oh man. It definitely has a throat hit, a nice, good, strong throat hit. Rather sweet tasting cigarette, and very reminiscent of a of a Marlboro Red. Actually, maybe a lot a lot sweeter and a less less pronounced burly taste. Uh, but the burly taste in the, in the cigarette tastes pretty much like a um, cigar tobacco. Burly, you know, tastes a little bit like uh, cigar tobacco. Very nice, very, very nice. Uh, back in the days, now it's probably a regular American blend, which is, uh, you know, mostly flu-cured Virginia mixed with burley, lots of sweetness, uh, humectants, all the, the good things to keep the cigarette, you know, nice until it reaches you. And, um, and uh, I guess, oriental tobacco also, uh, Turkish type of blend, sun-cured tobacco. This one burns a little faster than the, the other one. Strangely, maybe it's not as well densely packed. It's not a natural American spirit, so it's not, not that tightly packed, but still all right. I mean, uh, generally non-filled cigarettes uh, burn a little faster than the, the filled cigarette. For whatever reason, maybe because I'm you know, drawing harder on the cigarette. Little tobacco. Very close tasting also to a Palmel non filter. Um, the difference, the major difference between RJ Reynolds um, non filter cigarettes, which are, you know, Camel, Palmel, and uh, Lucky Strike, is that I find the quality of the paper used for these cigarettes a little superior. Uh, it doesn't stick to the lips, uh, not, as, not as much as the, uh, for example, the Camel non filter. I find them. To be a little more, you know, sticking a little more to the lips, but this not. I had no problem, you know, tearing up the the paper at the end. It sometimes happened. Um, generally, when I, I don't have smoked, uh, I haven't smoked a, a non-filled cigarette for quite some time, so it's a little more 
fragile, a little less convenient, you know, well, um, you know, filter cigarette, you can, you can, you know, carelessly uh, draw on the cigarette and you won't have any problem. Here, you gotta make, you know, the, the kind of the game is not to get much tobacco in your mouth also, and uh, not tearing the paper, not, you know, not slobbering on the, on the paper, you know, like very, very moist with saliva. Um, I like to do that now with cigarettes. First, I retro, well, I do the retrohaling stuff, which is uh, without inhaling, I pushes the the tobacco, uh, the tobacco, uh, not the tobacco. I push the tobacco down my nose, and it would be pretty, pretty stuck up really soon. But I uh, push a little bit of the smoke and then inhale the rest. Man, it tastes really nice that way. I don't know how much you can, you know, how much these are priced in Tennessee or anywhere in the United States, in fact. But these come from Tennessee, my friend Brown. Brent Brown. I love that name. Mm, that's a nice name. Um, but they are generally a little more expensive than Marble Res, for example. So I guess in Tennessee, if you pay like 5 or 550 for a packet of uh, premium filter cigarette like Camel, Marlboro, all, all those brands, um, those just named two, and uh, maybe a little less for stuff like uh, Liggett and Myers and you know Pell Mill, that kind of thing. Um, generally, you're gonna pay something like seven seven bucks or six fifty for a, a packet of these. Is it worth the extra money? Hell yeah! This is great. This is good tasting. It's strong. It's as strong as you know, as strong as can be. In fact, uh, no filter. Uh, in Europe, the paper is much more porous. Uh, so every time you take a draw, it sucks much more air. Um, but the with the actual smoke here, the paper is much less porous. So the the harder you draw, has nothing to you know, nothing to stop it. You know, except maybe the tobacco filters a little bit. I'm gonna stub it out right now. This was a nice packet of cigarettes, the last one from the packet. Chesterfield, you know, I keep them in a nice Ziploc bag when it's open because I, I don't smoke as many as uh, all the cigarettes, you know, my regular packet. I, I don't do that when I'm, when I'm on a regular basis, you no know, smoking cigarettes I buy here locally. But uh, I do that because I smoke maybe four or five a day, and then less and less because I want, you know, I want it to last forever. But they're so good, I can't. I really can't spare them. I'm gonna give it a ten out of ten. It's good. It's good tasting. Uh, it's a little, little harsher than, uh, for example, the Lucky Strike or even a Palmel. The Palmel, you know, it's rather sweet. It's very sweet tasting of the Palmel. Um, this is a little more, you know, Philip Morris type of uh, cigarettes, and generally Philip Morris has, you know, a little more chemical taste. It's not really a cigarette when you say, "Oh, my goodness, I taste the, I taste everything in it. It tastes like sulfur. It tastes like, it, it, it tastes bad. It tastes like chemicals." No, not at all. Here, yeah, it's probably a much better quality of tobacco than even in the Marlboro Red, because there's nothing to hide. You can't hide it behind the behind the filter. You know, if it's the tobacco has to be nicely cut. It, it looks almost when you when you rip off the end of the cigarette filter. I'm gonna do it now. Okay, I do that. I never you know I never tear a, a freshly opened cigarette. Uh, I mean, an unsmoking cigarette. But here, yeah, I'm gonna show you how it looks. Looks like that. Okay, so now obviously it's got a little bit of ash. Among it, but it looks pretty, pretty, pretty nice. Could be almost, almost uh, the quality of roll your own tobacco. So little shorter strands of tobacco. But for example, I got one here. Come on, baby. Yeah. So about a millimeter wide. Maybe with the contrast. I got a lot of tobacco in my hand. <laughs> it's gonna be a little messy, but anyway, I'm gonna clean that up. So. so that is typical shit, just falling. Uh, anyway, you get a little flakes, but 
most of it is nicely cut back here. So, I really dig those cigarettes. I really like them. I really like Chesterfield non-filter. Um, I still prefer the Camel non-filter. Camel non-filter are even harsher. These ones, if you smoke them hard, they're really, really throat hitter, lung fucker, ass kicker, what have you. But I can prefer the taste of the Camel, and the Camel are they feel a little bit stronger, despite being shorter. Uh, it's like a concentrated um, little smoke here. It's king size, uh, which is an added, uh, an added convenience. Uh, I like the, the format of the cigarette, and it's very, very you know, you get a lot, you get a few more puffs, a little more bang for your buck, a little more smoke for your buck. Uh, I really love those cigarettes, honestly. I didn't know they still, you know, they were still available. I knew they were still made, but when my friend over there came and told me he could find those Chesterfield, well, I'm for United States unfiltered cigarette. I'm a whore, you know. Simply, I would, you know, I would sell myself for for that, those cigarettes. Really, really, really love those. Uh, nice packet, a lot of history. You know, third best selling brand of the 30s, 50s, 40s. Oh, man. Uh, a packet like there, unopened and full from the. Unopened then full, obviously. Uh, from uh, World War II with. Um, with um, for use with the military, you know, type of um, stamp on it. This would go up to $100. Seriously. Uh, so. And you can still find them. I saw on eBay there was a, a full carton of Lucky Strikes unopened from World War II. And that was 100... No, sorry. $1,200 and it sold at that price for 10 packets of, you know, an open carton of Lucky Strikes from World War II. Can't imagine that. I really, I really love those. I mean, I don't know what to say. Otherwise, then it tastes good, tastes a little bit like Marlboro Red without the filter. That makes any sense. It's a little harsh. It's got a lot of nicotine packed into it if you smoke first in the morning. It's kind of, you know, I'm not that heavy as a smoker. I'm not a two pack a day smoker. Uh, I've read, you know, on average, I smoke probably around 10 to 15 a day. Still not that, it's not that much, you know. I try to keep. Try to keep it on a reasonable level, but the first of the day is kicking my ass. If I drink a little alcohol and it's kicking my ass again, why am I always disturbed when I do reviews? It's fucking. But anyway, not gonna make it any longer. It's gonna be already like 18 minutes. Thanks for watching. Thanks a lot. Thanks to all the new subscribers. Thanks to the faithful one. I hate when the phone rings. An Apple a day keeps the doctor away as long as you aim well, but and if you can't find these, it's a 10 out of 10 for me. It's strong, it's good tasting, it's good. A good nicotine, you know, I said it was strong, so yeah, I repeat myself. These are good, these are great, these are awesome. Um, probably in my, you know, the cigarettes I smoke in the United States, I'd say first, camel not filter, second, these. And then um, Lucky Strikes, Non-Filter, and then the Palma. And all are above anything I can find uh, with the filter. You know, uh, Mob Red even. This is much better. So if you, if you pay five bucks for a uh, packet or, or more, depending on what state you live in, um, you know, probably like eight. Eight bucks for a pack of regular cigarettes, so these are, are gonna be like ten ten dollars a packet. Well worth it. It's it might not be the the pack you're gonna carry around and smoking in the in the winter as fast as you can and then go back to work. It's more of a treat a treat. Uh, seriously, you know, it's more something you enjoy at home. You you enjoy a few in a day maybe. You know, if you smoke a pack a day, maybe smoke six or seven of these. You know, really, really, this is, this is a bless.
bled. Given by God, approved by the FDA. Okay? Stop here, and Apple or Jacob's doctor away as long as you aim well.